Well, they're right here. Welcome to this episode of the Barnacle Inspiration Series where, you guessed it, we're talking about dragons. I had a request from an audience member saying that they wanted to see some dragon episodes relating specifically to wyverns. Uh, so I've got a fair few wyvern mocks in this episode, but also uh, a few different ways that you could approach a dragon that aren't wyverns. And so I'll begin with a wyvern mock here in case you're like, what's a, what's a wyvern? Don't you worry, I'll be explaining. So let's take a look at some cool dragon mocks, and if you're planning on building a dragon mock, or you've been thinking about building a dragon mock this episode's for you we'll give you some uh, creative inspiration there to help you get those juices flowing and those mocks are building this first mock here is by my snail eats pizza and it's called beowulf's bane really awesome dragon mock here uh, this one for the wings it specifically uses some of the ninjago fire snake elements to form these wings so it looks like he's got um three of those sets here uh or at least maybe brick link some of those uh, pieces from the fire snake there and use them very very well as cool looking wing designs here it's nice how they kind of branch off in that sort of uh, uh, kind of almost like a cut cloth kind of nature there. They, they have that sort of um, almost like a wave. They kind of ebb and flow a little bit there. Just layering them in that fashion. It very much resembles uh, an effective looking dragon wing. And they also get that kind of nice little fire touch to them as well, which uh, I think sort of suits the, the rough concept of this mock, that it is a sort of more uh, fire elemental type of dragon here, which is really cool. So I mentioned up top the idea of a wyvern. So we'll head over to uh, Wikipedia here, and I'm just going to Google what it means to be a wyvern. So a wyvern is a specific type of dragon, which is two -legged, uh, a two-legged dragon there that has a barbed tail. So like we see on this mock here, uh, you can see some depictions of dragons that have sort of the legs and then the kind of hands and then the wings on the back. So instead, this mock here is a wyvern because its hands are are wings. You know, kind of similar to like a, a bat in the real world. They don't really have hands, their hands just are their wings. And this mock here does also have that barbed tail. We have a few uh, examples of wyverns later that don't have the barbed tail, but I don't think that's really a hard and fast rule. You can do whatever you want when you're building a dragon, but it's cool that the barbed tail here is more flame-like, and again, it uses some pieces from the Fire Fang uh, Ninjago snake set. Uh, these are the tongues on those uh, fire snakes there. And they work well as a sort of almost like kind of Charizard-like tail where just the tip of it is on fire and is flaming there, which is really cool. So really nice use of those pieces, by the way. I mean, I myself bought that fire snake set and let it inform a mock that I built. And I think that's always a really good idea too. If you do end up buying a set, uh, you know, can certain pieces from it really help to influence a mock that you're going to make? I've I've done it a few times actually, where I've bought a set and I've really liked it. And I've gone, actually, this new piece or this more unique piece that comes with the set, I really want to do something fun with this. And you, you let that inform a mock. Uh, so something to consider, especially if there's a, a set you've been eyeing uh, and you want to build the set, you want to have fun with the set, and then you want to turn those pieces into a mock. It uh, sounds like a fun day out, really. So looking at the dragon's head design on this mock, I think it's really cool. Using some of the Metro foot pieces here as sort of the, the bottom jaw. I like that it's a different color too, just the little hints of silver on this mock I think work quite well. Uh, but also, yeah, just the, the general kind of shape of the front of that foot does look like uh, kind of a little, little slight uh, agape open mouth there. I think that works very nicely. It's, it's always cool to see pieces being shaped in that manner uh, where it is sort of helping to form a more articulated face design like that. I also love to the use of the tubing here as sort of horns on this dragon head here. It's just unique. It's very different. It looks nice. There's something very uh, intrinsically bionicle about that. It just, just, it's cool. It's really cool. I think this mock in general is really cool too. It's uh, a little bit more unique. It's using some pieces in some really clever ways, and it's got a, a nice little sense of, of personality and character to it. I think it's, it's very well done. So good job, my snail eats pizza. Beowulf's Bane is a cool-looking mock that you've done here. Nice, uh, nice, nicely done. Let's move on to the next dragon mock here. This is by Daniel Brickson, and it's called Kanohi Dragon. So this, of course, is not a wyvern, but I wanted to, like I said, touch upon a few examples of dragons that are not wyverns, just to remind you that there's a lot of made-up lore about dragons, or maybe real lore. Maybe dragons did exist. Who knows? Or will exist in the future. Mm. But there's a lot of lore and a lot of different interpretations of dragons out there from all different forms of pop culture or myth and legend, all sorts of stuff that you can look into. So do your research. Have a look at stuff. Uh, look to things that you enjoy that feature dragons in them and inspire your dragon mocks to fit those aesthetics, fit those looks, because some of them can be very different from others uh, and you can take a lot of inspiration from them. 
For example, I think this Kanohi dragon mock here has a little bit of inspiration from a more eastern dragon design with the whiskers and the sort of more elongated uh, body shape here, and it, it almost looking a little bit more, to some degree, serpent-like, like it doesn't have wings, uh, but it's still a sort of big, menacing, cool-looking dragon. It's awesome. So the Kanohi dragon is actually a canon uh, creature in the Bionicle storyline. I'm going to head over to good old Biosector here, and I'll read a little bit about the Kanohi dragon, because... I remember even as a kid thinking it was really cool, uh, and it is a, uh, it's always a good thing to do. Read, read through Biosector and learn a thing or two about some of the canon beasts, monsters, characters, heroes, and villains. It's, uh, there's a lot you can learn, really. Uh, so, the Kanohi Dragon. Uh, it says here on Biosector, the Kanohi Dragon is an immense Rahi possessing mammoth strength. Its body is decorated by glittering scales shaped like Kanohi masks, which often lure unsuspecting victims into a trap. The dragon is highly susceptible to cold temperatures, with frigid enough temperatures reducing it to comatose. That's really cool. There's more, but hey, head over to Biosector yourself and give it a read, because it's always fascinating to do. Um, I remember loving that concept as a kid, the idea that its scales look like bionicle masks, and, I don't know, there's just something really cool about that. And I love that idea too. Maybe you've got a bunch of masks in your collection. And, and people say that to me all the time. They're like, how, how are some other ways that I could use masks instead of, you know, a mask? Why not do this? Why not make them scales on a dragon like this? You know, and, and there's times too, like, for example, let's let's take a look at the the uh, upper arms and the lower legs down here on this dragon mock. Uh, both of them use that Vakama mask there just to get some very nice shaping to it. And... You could kind of see people using masks on genuine any, any kind of mock just to get some nice shaping. But I like here that it is this nice double usage for the Kanohi dragon where, yeah, those Vokama masks actually just work well in creating an organic looking arm or leg design, but they also look like actual masks because that's what they are. And that's kind of the gimmick for this mock. You know, we specifically take a look at the um, torso. There's a whole bunch of Onoa masks there that look like scales, but also look like Kanohi masks, which is the whole concept of the Kanohi dragon. So I think it's really awesome. I love how uh, Daniel Brickson here is really kind of playing with that, uh, with how he's into, uh, um, added uh, Bionicle Masks into this mock. It's really nice to see. So I think it's a cool concept and something you could play around with too. Can you use Bionicle Masks as scales on a dragon? Because that's super cool. I also love the head design here. I briefly touched upon the whiskers before. I think they're super, super cool. Uh, really nice looking uh, head design here. And also a really nice take on the original Kanohi dragon because... It's a cool look and mock, the original one, but Daniel here's really kind of updated it in some interesting ways using more sort of modern pieces and more advanced techniques. And honestly, I think he's done a fantastic job and I personally prefer his take on the Kanohi Dragon to the original one. Not that I'm knocking the original one. I enjoyed the original one, but it's always cool to see different people's interpretations of stuff. So uh, definitely something to consider too. Head over to Biosector and look at some of the interpretations of uh, official canon characters that weren't actually sets but were maybe you know combo models or just fan-made models and you go hey you know what i'm gonna build it my own way because why not i think it works but yeah super cool i love to one little final thing and we'll move on to the next one i love the uh, the kind of um uh, like spiky kind of back design of this mock here how he's got a whole bunch of hero factory shells most likely attached some flex tubing in between them on the uh, uh the connection points on those uh, on those pieces and then it uh, looks like a very effective looking kind of dragon um, kind of uh, spike back design. Very effective. It works well. Heck, I'm sure you've got a whole bunch of Hero Factory armor lying around. It's a great way to achieve that sort of design on a dragon mock and relatively easy to do provided you've got some flex tube, which isn't too hard to come by. So there you go. Works well. Also good techniques on this one. Let's move on to the next mock. It's by Matt Goldberg and it's called Earth Wyvern. So here's another Wyvern for you. What I like so much about this is the the head on this one. This is just directly from a Ninjago dragon set here. Uh, some of the older Ninjago dragon sets came with these sort of pre-molded head designs for the dragon sets. And some of them were really cool. Specifically this one. I really liked this one, actually. And Matt's put it to good use here. And even to this day, literally yesterday, I went to the shops and I bought one of the newest Ninjago dragons. It's the white bone skeleton one. It looks really cool. I haven't opened it yet because it's my Christmas present, but... I was drooling over the box on the way home because it looks so cool. Ninjago is killing it with dragons, and honestly, they've always been killing it with dragons. The dragons they make are fantastic, and it's kind of a constant that there will always be Ninjago dragons, I'm sure of it. I mean, almost every wave seems to include a dragon or two. So, can you use that to your advantage? Can you take some of those system Ninjago sets 
and, you know, take some of the cool looking pieces from it, uh, maybe mimic some of the designs or advance some of the designs in some fashion and allow that to inform a dragon mock of your own because dragons are cool and hey, some of those Ninjago uh, dragon mocks could be a, a nice starting point uh, for your own mock. Why not? I think it's a cool idea. And I think, uh, I think Matt's, uh, Matt's mock here is a really nice example of that, really playing off some of the cooler pieces from those sets. Nicely done. I love too that this mock is more sort of primarily Hero Factory uh, CCBS uh, focus, has, a, has a more of that focus to it. Uh, you know, you take a look at um, the tail, even the sort of upper legs and the arms as well, or the wings, really the arm wings as, as it were. They primarily seem to use some of those Ben 10 Humongousaur pieces there and a few other different uh, Hero Factory joints and pieces there to round it all off. And it looks good. It's a fairly simplistic uh, construction in general, but it works well. It has a nice sort of Earth-like look to it, almost like tectonic plates like shifting or sort of uh, jutting rocks kind of coming out of the ground. And this is an Earth Wyvern after all, so it's very fitting and just very cool. Uh, so some very nice use of a, of a primarily Hero Factory-based build. Because sometimes people say that. They're like, hey, I only really have Hero Factory parts or construction pieces uh, from you know Hero Factory or G2 Bionicle. Like, I don't have any of these sort of OG, more sort of Technic-focused G1 Bionicle pieces. Doesn't matter, man. You can still make a fantastic mock much like this that barely uses more olden-day pieces and just sort of focuses on the more modern parts. Give it a go. One final thing I love about this too is the use of the boat sail pieces, which these came on a Lord of the Rings ship set uh, from the third movie. It's uh, such a good idea to do that, to pay attention to some of those boat sail pieces and use them as wings for a dragon because they're the perfect addition. Sometimes the wings can be really difficult because wings can have that sort of more flesh-like look to them almost and it can just be really hard to replicate with more blocky Lego bricks. So playing around with your cloth elements, your plastic elements, stuff like this, boat sails, all sorts of stuff, minifigure capes, anything can be a great way to really effectively achieve the realistic look of uh, a wing design like this. Very fitting. And you might be like, how exactly do I attach it? Well, kind of in the same way that a lot of the Ninjago sets actually do attach them, or the way that pirate ship sets attach them themselves, just getting a long axle and then getting a, like, a mixel joint connector pit at the end and just placing it on. As simple as that. Just like this mock here, we see it works well. It doesn't need to be super complex or difficult or weird. You could just straight up have axles connecting it, and that's it. And that works. It works. So there you go. There's a way of doing it. Really nice dragon mock here. On to the next one. And this is by Upside Down Vahi, and it's called Dragon's Breath. Now you might be like, Ben, that's not a dragon. That's a dragon bike, but it has dragon in the name. And that's kind of what I wanted to touch upon on this mock here is, yes, it's all well and good to build an actual living, breathing dragon mock. But why not build a mock that's inspired by dragons? So you build a bike that has a sort of more dragon aesthetic to it. Maybe you build a samurai warrior whose armor is made from the scales of dragons and his helmet has a more sort of dragon-like mouth aesthetic to it. Or, I don't know, maybe you want to build a weapon design that has some more kind of dragon flair to it. Or a shield that's using dragon scales or things. There's a lot of cool possibilities there. So how do you want to sort of include dragon themes or aesthetics into your mock? How do you want to do that? How can you do that? Can you be a little bit more subtle with it, a little bit more fun with it? And I don't know, find different ways where it's not just a blatant dragon, but there's that dragon aesthetic to it. Because it works really well here on this bike. This bike looks baller. It looks super, super cool. The fact that the sort of headlight bit at the front and the sort of... Um, I don't know, my bike terms, like the muzzle, I don't know, the front bit where the handlebars are, how there is that dragon head coming out of it. It looks badass, man. It's super cool. Um, and I could just see an awesome rider wearing this with a, with a leather jacket. Maybe he has like a samurai sword and like an oni mask or something. And he's just awesome. Um, there's so much personality in this bike, and I think it would be the perfect counterpart to a mock. So, heck, also that, why not build a cool motorcycle for your humanoid awesome-looking character? Because could pack a whole bunch of personality into it and uh, really communicate some awesome stuff but also it's just fun to build a motorcycle and it can be a lovely little addition to a mock why not why not why not it's just cool man it's really cool again this uh this bike here primarily uses pieces from ninjago sets this was the green ninjago mech dragon that came with the lego movie uh, lego ninjago movie sets one of the best Ninjago dragons ever. A really nice set, and a lot of Bionicle builders were buying it when it came out. So it's, uh, it was a desired, good-looking set there with some really good pieces that worked well for Bionicle stuff. So 
if you happen to still see it in shops, it might be discontinued set now. I honestly don't know. I, I know that some places still like to stock sort of slightly older sets, but maybe it's just a bit past its time. If not, head on over to Bricklink or eBay or something and see if you can pick one up because it was a great set and I think would work perfectly for sort of integrating more sort of subtle dragon aesthetics into random things like bikes or shields, weapons, toa, armor, all sorts of stuff like that. Why not? So yeah, really cool mock and uh, a different way of looking at a dragon. This next mock here is by Sean and Steph Mayo and it's called Trazak Wyvern. So again, this mock here uses some sail pieces which actually came from a creator uh, green dragon set. It was like a three-in-one, you could build all sorts of different things with it, but it came with these green sail pieces here, which were lovely little pieces. But what I like that uh, the builder here has done is he's actually kind of folded them in on themselves and created this sort of intricate pattern to them. Uh, you know, normally this sail piece is that just sort of flat, static kind of uh, cloth, but Instead, he's got those interesting kind of ridges in the in the cloth there that gives it a, a different looking aesthetic, a more unique looking aesthetic. And why can't you do that yourself? If you've got some cloth elements, maybe you want to kind of almost origami them and just, uh, you know, play around with finding different ways of folding it, bending it, and uh, distorting it in some fashion, which you could argue is maybe not too purist of you, but at the same time, you're not breaking the piece. Maybe you're putting a bit of stress on it, but heck, you know, if, it, if the boot fits, if it works, why not? It creates a nice looking aesthetic on this mark. It makes it a little bit more interesting, a bit more unique. Something to try for sure. So something to consider. Additionally too, I like the use of some of these Rakshi pieces here, specifically the Rakshi headpiece. It actually works pretty well as the head design on a dragon. So if you've got some of those Rakshi headpieces, could work well for a dragon mock. And additionally, those Rakshi back pieces and placing some of those Hero Factory spike pieces in there in the gap in between the Rakshi back piece creates a nice looking uh, sort of hunched neck with spikes on the back there. Perfect for a dragon. It looks really, really cool. Uh, so yeah, certainly something to think about playing around with some of your Rakshi pieces for a dragon mock. This is a cool looking dragon mock here. I, I definitely enjoy it. And some, some interesting concepts being played around with it. Uh, you could explore yourself. Now this next mock is by Arch Tinto and it is called Komodo. So I'm sure if you've just Googled like awesome, cool Bionicle, you know, this probably came up because this is a bit of a, bit of a sort of famous one here that I'm sure you've seen in, 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 uh, in your passing through the Bionicle community. And if you haven't, oh, and then I've got a nice treat for you because this is a fantastic mock. And an older mock too. The uh, the um, Flickr here says this image was taken in 2003. Very much a long time ago for sure. Um, that being said, it is using pieces from Kalma and I don't think Kalma came out in 2003. In fact, I'm pretty sure he didn't. So maybe the date on the camera there is wrong. But regardless, this is a, a much older mock and a bit more of a famous mock as well. But it still holds up today, man. It's such a fantastic build. And I wanted to talk about that. You know, dragons often are like the end game bosses in, in video games and just always sort of, you know, spectacular, awesome creatures. And sometimes it can be really fun to just build a big, massive one, because why not? And I always think that's a fun project, and a great way to learn, too, is to just use your entire collection, use everything you've got, and just build this big, hulking, massive creature. You know, maybe you're on summer vacation, or, you know, you, you've got a bit of time away from school, or uni, or work, or whatever, and you're like, you, you know what, I'm just going to go ham, I'm going to build a massive, big mock, have fun with it, see what I learn, grow as a builder, why not? Because... There's certain things you can do when you just build a larger mock that you just can't do with a smaller mock. And uh, you can learn so much about just general like structure and structural integrity when you're building a mock that's at this scale. You also get to just play around with pieces in new and fun ways. And sometimes it can just be fun to be like, nah, I'm going all out here. I'm going to build the biggest, greatest thing I can. Why not? You know, and this is definitely a, a good example of that. Some stuff that this mock does very well that, again, you couldn't do with a smaller mock. I mentioned those Karma pieces before. They're kind of used as the whiskers on this dragon head here. There's those orange sort of tentacle pieces here, just near the eye of the uh, dragon head there. Those pieces are naturally quite large. If you're building a sort of smaller mark there, it'd be a little bit more difficult to make them whiskers on a, on a dragon head. But when you get to this larger scale, you can really play around with some of those weird, obscure pieces uh, and see how they can be affected when they're being used uh, in larger, bigger areas. You know, some of those larger pieces suddenly become smaller 
and you can play around with them in different ways that you couldn't on a smaller area. So I think that's uh, certainly something to think about. Additionally too, uh, just sort of on the belly of this mock here, you can see a whole bunch of different repeated lift arm pieces. There's some in white and there's some in dark blue. They kind of uh, intersperse into each other. That's a really nice looking kind of belly design. Helps to get this more unique kind of curved belly shape to it. And, you know, additionally too, you know, like I said, pieces that uh, would be a little bit more difficult to use in... Uh, larger quantities on a smaller mock, but when you get to this larger scale here, you get to really play around with them and you get this beautiful curved organic shape to it. It's unique, it's different, and again, it's not really something you could do if it was used in a smaller space. So it's great to see when you do build a larger scale mock, how you can play around with your pieces a little bit more differently, and that you could achieve some fantastic results with them too. So by all means, you may not have a collection that uh, allows you to build to this massive scale, and that's all well and good too. There's no reason that you have to do this. It's not going to make you a better or worse builder if you do or don't make something to this awesome scale or, or, or build quality. But I definitely recommend at least trying that. You know, whether you're building something small or whether you're building something big, really just experiment with pieces. Play around with them in different ways that you maybe wouldn't have thought of doing before and see what you come up with because there's definitely a lot you can learn. I think this is a good example of that. And just a fantastic, awe-inspiring looking dragon is super cool. Let us now move on to this next mock here. It's by Mitch Phillips, and I don't know how to pronounce this mock's name, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to butcher that. But it's a really cool looking red dragon. Really, really cool looking red dragon. Has this awesome looking kind of scaled like look to it using some Lego flipper pieces of all things. What a great idea. A fantastic or like really striking color scheme here with these uh, bright, bright blues. Almost, I think it's an azure color. I always get confused with some of my different shades of colors here. Uh, the reds and the oranges also really pop in conjunction with that. It's just beautiful and just a really striking kind of pose to this dragon as well. It's just, it's just, it's just cool, man. I love too all the use of the blue leaf pieces here on the top of the, the head of this dragon. It's just something beautiful about that. And I love those leaf pieces, especially when they're more in more obscure colors. It's just a, a nice addition of a, a newer, funky, nicely colored piece. Very nice. Now you might be like, how did he even do this? Well, thankfully, our man Mitch Phillips here is an absolute mad lad. And he has actually posted his build process on Instagram, which I'll share with you now. So we can see some earlier whip photos here where he's got a bunch of flex tube, found ways of connecting them. So he's kind of got that string of two uh, kind of parallel uh, flex tubes sort of flowing in that manner. And then find uh, finding a few ways of adding some connection points on there. But then the kind of main, main way that he's uh, actually attached some of those scales here, you can see he has just sort of got this repeated pattern of these octagonal connector pieces, put some clips on each end and then put flippers on them. And then just repeated that a whole bunch of times and then simply sort of strung that into the flex tube and he's got that uh, awesome looking look and design. Really sort of simplistic when you break it down but when you put it all together it just looks fantastic. It's also interesting to note too just some of the different iterations of the head design how he's kind of played around with that as as well as how, how he sort of advances forward how he plays around with the belly and how that uh, interacts alongside some of those uh, flipper scale pieces as well and then just the funky shapes that he can get with it too and Something that I love about seeing these behind the scenes images is you kind of realize like, hey, this looked like an insanely hard to build difficult mock. But when you break it down, it's literally just a repeated pattern, but a very good repeated pattern. You know, it seems a little bit more simplistic when you really think about it. And I think that's just a good metaphor for mocking. Sometimes you can get a little overwhelmed with how's this going to work? Is it is it clever enough? Is it, you know, am I using advanced techniques? Am I using my piece as well? Does it look good? How's the shaping? How's the textures? But sometimes when you just take a more simplistic approach, it can work really well. And I think this is a great example of that. The end result is just beautiful, really visually striking, just awesome. And uh, such a unique, uh, clever way of playing with pieces to get these flipper scales here. But additionally, it's not that hard to make. You just got to have a whole bunch of the same part, which thankfully with places like Bricklink, it's not too hard to, to come across a uh, bulk of specific pieces here. So it's not exactly something that you yourself couldn't do. And that's pretty cool. So really cool to see the behind the scenes with this mock and even cooler to see the finished and final result, which just looks fantastic. A really, really nice dragon mock here. And we got a whole bunch of really nice dragon mocks today in this Wyvern dragon inspired episode. So hopefully you enjoyed. Thank you very much for listening. Of course, if you want to see some of your own mocks appear on the show, you can do so by submitting them to the submission email that you're currently seeing on your screen. Send me a few pictures, a whole bunch of pictures, a small description, a large description. I don't mind. Send it my way. I will add it to the list. And then one day it'll appear 
on the show. But remember, your patience is key. I've got a lot of submissions to work through. So eventually I will get to it. I'll do my best to. Additionally, if you want to see some of my own stuff, you can see me post dragons and all sorts of cool things over on my social media, my Instagram, Flickr, Facebook, all that sort of stuff. Links to that is in the description below. And links to all the mocks you saw in today's episode are also in the description below. So if you want to directly mention or talk to those builders or let them know just how much you enjoyed their mocks, you can do so if you check those links and comment on their stuff, which I very much recommend you do. That's it for today's episode. Hopefully you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next episode of the Bionicle Inspiration series. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.